this week's Parsha is Vayechi, right? And uh, in this week's Parsha, Jacob, we're still in the story of Joseph, but now Jacob has come to Egypt and Jacob is about to die. He's getting old. He's about to die. And he summons Joseph and Joseph's two sons who are Ephraim and Manasseh. And he tells Joseph that he's going to bless Joseph's sons and he gives them and give them an inheritance as if they were his own sons. He says, any boys that you have, any children you have after these two, they're yours. But these two are like mine. Now, what does that mean? I mean, it almost doesn't even make sense to us in this modern world that we live in. But what this means is, is that when, when Jacob's uh, inheritance is divided out, Joseph will actually get a double portion as if he was a firstborn because his two sons are taking his place as sons of Joseph, all right? So, um, so Ephraim and Manasseh are going to both receive an inheritance, so it's almost like Joseph is receiving twice as much, even though he is not the firstborn. Of course, we know he is the firstborn of the wife that, that Joseph, that Jacob loved and really wanted to marry, but we also know that the Torah says that you know if you have two wives and you love one and you don't love the other and the one you don't love is the one who gave you a child first you're not allowed to deny that child their firstborn double portion simply because you don't love their mother if that's your firstborn son that's the one who gets the double portion so by taking Ephraim and Manasseh and adopting them so to speak as if they were his he's able to give Joseph a double portion without kind of shunning his actual oldest child and doing what the Torah says you're not allowed to do. So he says he's going to bless Ephraim and Manasseh. And after he does that, and there's a whole thing, because, you know, we have this kind of history so far with all of the forefathers that for one reason or another, the younger son keeps getting the blessing of the oldest. And um, it's really kind of kind of interesting how that happens. And so here too, when Joseph brings Ephraim and Manasseh to Jacob, what does he do? He crisscrosses his hands and he puts his right hand on the, the younger child and his left hand on the older child. And Joseph says, wait a minute, no, dad, that's wrong. And he says, never mind. They're both going to be great, but this is the way it's got to be. So Jacob blesses Joseph's sons, and he talks about how he's giving them the inheritance. Then Jacob gathers all of his sons together, and he says he's going to tell them what's going to happen in the end of days. All right? So it sounds like he's about to give a prophecy, right? And we should pay attention because this could have significance to us. Uh, you know, that we could look at this and see, okay, this is what's going to happen to the Jewish people. And then... He goes on, and for most of the Parsha, he's talking about each son, like in the manner that one would expect him to be giving blessings. He's not giving a prophecy. He doesn't talk about what, he never actually gets to what's going to happen in the end times at all. What he does instead, and, and it's interesting because at the end of the passage, it says that, they, that these were blessings, and yet... Um, they really, with few exceptions, sound more like curses because he goes through and he enumerates each one's personal character qualities. And with only a couple of exceptions, they're all very negative, or many of them are very negative. And in fact, the Torah actually says, all these are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them and blessed them, each man according to his blessing, he blessed them. So what gives? If you're reading this description, you're like, that's a blessing? How can you consider that a blessing? It's a description of what each uh, son's characters are, but how could that be a blessing? So that's what I kind of wanted to bring uh, uh, up as an application and something for us to think about during this week, is that what we can get out of this is that each of us has been endowed with certain character qualities, certain strengths, certain weaknesses, right? Those are a given. But what's not a given is what we do with them. What's going to happen in the end of our days 
is completely up to us. It's totally unwritten. Yes, God knows because he's outside of time, but it's unwritten for us. Just like Jacob could not have told his sons what was going to happen in the end of days because that hasn't been written yet. The, the slate is still blank as far as what they're going to do with their character qualities. Their character qualities were pretty much set in stone. And so he was able to comment on that. But he wasn't able to say what was going to happen in the future because it was still up to them to choose what they were going to do with those aspects of themselves. And so the thing that we can take from this is that it is completely up to each and, each and one of us how we choose to use the gifts and talents and character qualities that God has endowed us with. And even the negative aspects of who we are can be used for good if we choose to harness it that way. There's a, there's a saying and a teaching in Judaism that if um, if you have a person who has a um, like a, a thirst for blood, right? He could either become a murderer, or he could harness it for good and become a butcher, or he could take it to the next highest level, I think that the, they say, or become a moil. A moil, a moil is the guy who performs a circumcision, who brings Jewish boys into the covenant. All right, so the point is, is that the same character quality that a person has can be used in different ways. They can be used to do evil. They can be used in a neutral way. Or they can be used for God's glory. They can be used for a mitzvah. And it's completely up to us what we do with them. You know, the fact that somebody is um, highly energetic or the fact that somebody is very sensitive or the fact that somebody is whatever, we could list a whole gamut of character qualities and those can be used for good and those can be used for bad. The fact that someone is shy could have negative consequences in their lives, but it can be harnessed and used to be to uh, write poetry or I can't think now of all of the examples that I might come up with, but it's up to you what you're going to do with those aspects of who you are. Now, there are some theories that you can even change certain aspects of who you are. I'm a living example of that. Um, when I was a, a young woman, and I had just gotten married. Um, you see, I'm pretty good, pretty sharp when it comes to picking up social cues. So, but I noticed that like every time I walked into a room full of people, the way they responded to me was, was not the way I wanted people to respond to me. Uh, they would stop talking, they would move away, different things. And so what I decided to do was I asked my closest friends, I said, you know, I noticed that people respond to me a certain way, and I really don't want people to respond to me that way. I want you to be honest with me and tell me what it is that's causing people to react to me the way that they are. And um, they, fortunately, I chose my friends carefully, and they gave me constructive criticism, and I took it for what it was, because, of course, nobody wants to tell you, you know, you're loud and obnoxious. But, um, but they did in nice ways. They, they shared with me that, you know, I was loud. And when I came into a room, I just like totally took the air out of the room and, and whatever. And so I began to pray and to ask God to help me to have a quiet and gentle spirit and to change that aspect of who I am. And um, I don't think that anybody today would say that I'm a loud and obnoxious person. Um, I don't think I, I think I managed to overcome those aspects of myself and to actually change how I think, how I think about other people and how I think about myself. So to some degree, we do have the power to recreate ourselves. I think that's part of what it means that we are made B'Tselam Elohim in the image of God, that, that we have the ability to create reality in our lives. You know, I think I may have even shared this last week. There's a passage in the Tanakh that says that as a man thinks, so he is. And so the way that we think can influence who we are 
And so if we can change what we're thinking about, we can actually change who we are. But the lesson that we get from this week's Parsha is that you've got these character qualities, regardless of whether or not you change them, you get to decide how you're going to use them. You get to decide what the end of days is going to look like for you, depending on how you harness those qualities about yourself. 